Welcome everybody. So, uh, some of you uh, saw the picture of this board on my community page and asked if I could just kind of explain how I put it together and, you know, what the general purpose of it is, if it's worth it or not. So, you know, in the last video I did, I had made this simple little universal USB charger here. And it was pretty straightforward what it does. I mean, you can charge. I put one port on it. And it also has a built-in flashlight. It's a really bright LED. And I wanted to expand on this. So, you know, with the whole coronavirus going on, and, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of ifs. People are wondering if the power is going to go out, if, if this is going to happen, if that's going to happen. There's so many movies that's got everybody scared. So, why not have a backup? We all have mobile devices these days, so it'll come in handy. So, what you have, you know, first off, is you got three USB ports here. These are really simple little devices. It's not, you don't have to be afraid of it. Now, you wonder, you can get these online just like this. They sell them like 10 for 5 bucks on Amazon. Uh, I've, I've had a bunch of them for a while now, so I, that's what I'm utilizing them for. But you can also get them if you have something like this laying around. This is just a USB port splitter. So it takes one USB port and gives you two. Right here, in the end of this cables, are these little devices. That's what's inside there. You can literally cut this open, and you'll find these. So, they're really straightforward. You have a positive and a negative hookup. That's all it is. As long as you're giving it around 5 volts, it'll work fine. You don't have to worry. So... Now, you see these two boards here, the blue boards, those are power buck converters. They basically take uh, a higher voltage. In this case, I've got 9-volt batteries. I've got 7-volt batteries. I can plug any one of them into these cables here, and... I can, you can see here, this little tiny potentiometer, this little blue box here with the little screw on it. You use a voltmeter on the outputs of the board. You got your ins and your outs. They're clearly marked. It says in and out. Very simple. You put your, your voltmeter on the end of it, and you turn this little potentiometer screw here, until you read 5 volts. You want the output to be about 5 volts. It can be plus or minus 1 volt or less. That's fine. But typical USB devices want 5. So now you wonder, where can you get these? Well, you can buy these online. They sell them in 5 packs and 10 packs. I think a 10 pack is like $8.00. So, they're really not expensive, but you can also get them for free if you have any of these cords laying around. If you read on the cord, you'll see it says input 120 volts, which is your standard household plug, in the U.S. at least. And the output on this cord is 9 volts. That's fine. We can take this... And if you open it up, I actually have several, so I've opened it up. This is what's inside. All I did was pop the, the case off of it. And this right here is just a buck converter. The only difference is this steps down from 120 volts. But you can give it lower voltage, like 9 or 12 volts or whatever, in the input which is clearly marked in and it says output right on there and it's red and black you can't miss it it'll output 9 volts 
these little USB uh, ports here, these little uh, charging devices, charging module, whatever you want to call it, they can take up to 9 volts. They prefer 5. That's where they recommend. Now, this little piece here is a little transformer in there. It will get warm if you're running only, if you're running 9 volts through it. It will get warm because it does a step down here. It'll take your 9 volts and turn it into 5. They want you to give it 5 just so that it's less work it has to do and less likely to burn out. But in a pinch, you can pull the board out of these plugs. Now, obviously, do not do this while it is plugged in. Do not plug it in once it is open. There's, there's transformer here. There's, you know, you can if you touch the wrong thing, it can kill you. So keep that in mind. Again, you see two red wires here, but it is marked positive and negative on the board. There's a little plus symbol and a negative symbol, so it's clearly easy to do. This also takes, because, you know, in the U.S., it's AC current, 120 volts. It also turns it into DC. USB is all DC, direct current. So, like I said, in a pinch, these will work. Now, like, it, it, you know, you can get these online cheap. It's good to have them. You never know. I've got a few of them laying around. I've got different ones. You know, this one here does the same exact thing, but made by a different manufacturer. You can see it's still pretty much the same components on here. The this one though, this they, these blue ones can only take an input of up to 32 volts. And you can step it down to as low as 3.7 volts. This one, do you see it's got two and two transformers, all that, more pieces to it. This can actually handle up to 60 volts input. And you can step it down all the way to 3.7. A lot of devices also, you know, USB devices actually only use 3.7. So that's why they go that low. But again, you can find these online. Just look for a step-down buck converter. And you want something that takes an input of 3.7 to, you know, 30 volts, 32 volts, 48 volts, whatever. As long as you can step it down to around 5 volts, it will work. So, take these and put them out of the way. Now... This little device here that you see, it actually, I pulled this out of the plug that came with these batteries here. These are 6-volt battery packs. There's two of them. I just made a wire that wires them together in parallel. So it's still only 6 volts, but twice the milliamp hours out of it. And uh, this one I actually use to power the Arduino boards like this Arduino Nano here I use that to power those for my robot but this little thing here that came with the USB cord with this battery is for charging the battery from a USB so it takes an input of 5 volts and it puts an output of up to 6.7 volts. And the idea is, it, I use this chip instead of just wiring straight to the battery, because this chip already has a auto shutoff. It knows when the battery is full. So, something to keep in mind. A little battery charger module very handy and again clearly marked negative and positive in negative and positive out very simple so now I can not only use this to power up to three USB devices I can also use it to charge this battery pack and I also have 
this battery pack that I just made the other day this is the battery pack that powers the legs on my robot the 18 servos for the legs these are actually there is 24 3.7 volt 4,000 milliamp hour lithium ion batteries in this I wired them in pairs in series which turns 3.7 into 7.4 volts and then I wired it in er, in serial oh, sorry I wired these in serial on my I apologize the two are either wired in pairs in serial to up it to 7.4 volts and then they're all wired together in parallel so that I still only get 7.4 volts but now I have 48,000 milliamp hours. So this will last a whole lot longer. So this is what I can use as an input device in this board. And then I can charge this battery pack from this battery pack. So if I take this and we'll plug it in here. Now remember, these boards are current sensitive. You have to make sure you put negative to negative, positive to positive. Even on a low voltage input, it will fry the board if you put it on wrong. So just bear that in mind when you're working with these things. I've wired them so that the, the negative is on the look, this pin here. And the positive is this pin. So, we plug this in here. And now what it's doing is powering this board, which steps it down from 7.4 volts to 5 volts for this battery charging module. So now I can take my, my 6 volt battery pack and I can plug it in again this is is uh, current sensitive so now you see it's flashing it's charging this battery pack from this battery pack now I'm going to be building uh, an encasement for all of this and I'm also putting on four of these. These are 12 volt uh, solar panels. These were given to me. I have four of them. I don't know what they cost online. I, I can't imagine they would cost much. But I'm going to be wiring all of these solar panels in parallel to this module. So that I can charge these battery packs off of solar power now solar power panels are tricky they have a max does have a maximum output of 12 well 14 and a half volts really in full sunlight in here in the room it's you know evening now it's not bright enough for me to power the USB ports so basically it would be a trickle charger on this side because I'm only going to get like 4 volts out of it in the sun or in the light in here. But four panels together on a bright day, I could actually power all of these USB ports off of those four little solar panels. Now, this can also take 12 volt this module here like I said, it can handle up to 32 volts. So I can actually take the positive and negative wires from a car battery, because that's only 12 volts, and I can run it through this, and I can power USB devices off of a car battery, and I can charge these batteries from a car battery. So I can literally put wires to a car that's running, so the alternator is putting power out, I can run it through here and charge these batteries from a running vehicle. Or, even if the vehicle's off, I can still charge these. 
the inverse is I can also use those four solar panels to charge a car battery. It'll take all day because they're low amperage uh, solar panels, but it is possible. So that's another reason why this mod, this whole board here, I'm just going to call it a module because it's a module I made, but it has many uses. So now you're seeing these battery packs. I also have AA batteries. I have 9 volt batteries. You can literally, any power source that provides a DC current of 32 volts or less, you can plug into here and you can power USB devices or charge other batteries. So, you know, let's say we take this off. So now, obviously, like I said, I'm building an encasement for all this. So, these wires, it won't be a bunch of switching wires. They'll all be wired together. But let's say now I want to power the USB port. So now this big battery pack here is plugged into the USB port. I can take, well, I had a USB cord here. I don't know what the heck I did with it. It probably fell off. Oh, don't you love when things work out? Yep, sure enough, I dropped it. So, I've got this USB cable here. I used it in the last video. This is actually part of my robot wiring. So, let's say we take it, plug it into one of the USB ports. So now, we should get, if this is all working right, of course this is a very stiff cord, we should get five volts coming out of that wire. Five point one four volts. So that's how we know that this is working. We got voltage coming out of the USB port that tells us we got the proper voltage coming out. Always, always, always use a voltmeter to test everything. Double check, triple check. Always use a voltmeter. You if. If you don't turn this little potentiometer here and change the output, sometimes these things come and they're turned all the way up. So this thing could be outputting 15, 16, 17 volts and you were only looking for 5 and you can end up, you know, frying your USB module. So always put a voltmeter on your wiring. Double check, triple check, quadruple check, whatever you got to do. So, let's say we take the big battery out. And you have, you know, a lot of toys have these batteries. Home appliances have these batteries. You, you know, you, I'm sure you probably have some 9-volt some batteries laying around or some double A's. You can get these little battery holders here or these little uh, 9 volt battery clips here. You can get a bag of them for like three dollars online. So they're dirt cheap. But you know let's say we only have our 9 volt battery. Again we still have power. I'm running this straight off of a 9 volt. Again, we check our output. Five. 
5.14 again. That's coming off of a 9 volt battery. You see it says 9 volt. But if we took this off and check the power coming off of our 9 volt, You see, 9.67 coming out of that battery. It's a brand new battery, never used. So you saw, fully charged 9 volt battery, we were still getting only our 5 volt range out of these USB ports. So, like I said to recap, you know, look around your house. I'm sure you may have some USB cables out laying around. You know, you might have some plugs laying around. Again, I could take this, and I really didn't have to disassemble this because it output, this plug outputs 9 volts. So I could have taken this and literally cut the end off of here and put the wires straight to the USB module, bypassed all the rest, and had one working USB charging module off of this DC cable so it's really up to you how much you want I wanted to have more than one port I've got that big battery pack I can literally charge my phone probably 30 or 40 times off of that battery pack before it's completely dead so and of course I have all these other batteries I keep laying around so at the you know, now that we've covered all this, if you want to keep watching, I'm going to just post the uh, or play the pictures of this battery as I assembled it. So you'll see it in, in the different stages it went through to get to this point. Otherwise, I appreciate you watching, and I hope you learned something from this. Just, you know, be prepared. This, we don't know what this coronavirus is going to do for us. We don't know how it's going to affect all of our lives going forward. But we do know that there's hundreds of satellites still in space, still transmitting signals. So, be prepared. At least be able to have your communication devices. This will power iPads notebooks you know the smaller notebook not the big giant laptops it could but it would require other type of wiring which I'm not going to get into here but this battery pack alone I can charge many devices with or run emergency devices off of so just keep that in mind when you're when you're going forward now pre being prepared it's not that hard. You don't have to be afraid of it. This is all low voltage. You're not going to get shocked to death unless you're touching these while it's plugged in, which obviously do not do. So, again, I appreciate you watching this. I hope you did learn something. And now I'm just going to run through the pictures that I took assembling this battery. So, thank you very much. Now you can have even more choice and variety when presenting your logos on video.